Hi everyone, Amelia here from Higher Standards Caregiver Training, here for your regular 10 minute two tip Tuesday. Um, I'm here today, as you can see, with the newest member of the Higher Standards Caregiver Training family. He's a little bit sweepy. He's a little sweepy. Um, this is Morpheus. He is brand new to us and he was just adopted a couple of days ago from the SPCA here in North Texas. Um, and he is, I, I listen, you all have seen the higher standards hound before. Um, I'm actually a dog person. Don't hate me, I'm actually a dog person. But this little guy has sort of stolen my heart. He also thinks sometimes, I, I am talking about you. He thinks sometimes that he might be a parrot and he likes to perch right up here. So, um, I don't know, he might end up on my head at some point during this. We'll just see, but he's pretty sweepy right now. Um, anyway, let's get right to it. Uh, as always, this is for educational purposes only. Um, if anything that I say reminds you of someone that you know, someone you work with, someone you love, who you think needs to be assessed by a licensed healthcare provider, then please make sure that person is assessed by the appropriate provider, um, as this is truly for educational purposes only. Okay, so first tip today, we're going to be talking um, about caring for folks with spinal cord injuries. And there's a specific issue that anyone caring for someone with a spinal cord injury really, really should be aware of um, because it has the ability to significantly um, uh, impact the health of this person. And in fact, if whether or not a caregiver is aware that something like this can happen, can literally be a life or death situation. So it's one of those things that a lot of times, you know, we we don't think, we often think about this kind of information as being too technical for non-medical caregivers or for family caregivers. Um, but really and truly, the fact is that this information is just as essential as something like understanding how to do a stand pivot transfer or put on gate belt properly. Um, because, again, this is information where if the caregiver is aware of it, they can, they can take the steps that they need to prevent it from happening, or they can notice that something might be wrong and they can contact the appropriate medical provider or call emergency services. And if they're not aware of it, then they can't do either of those things. Um, and as always, it's just a knowledge issue. It's just an information issue. So I'm really excited to share this with you guys today. Uh, um, so what we're going to be talking about is this thing called autonomic dysreflexia. And autonomic dysreflexia is just a fancy term that basically means the um, autonomic nervous system, uh, the part of the nervous system that controls things uh, that are not voluntary, things like heart rate, uh, like how much you sweat, uh, blood pressure, those kinds of things, goes haywire. And when it happens, I'm sorry, buddy, I've got to put you down for just a second. So folks who have a spinal cord injury um, at level T7 or above, and spinal cord injuries are um, designated uh, based, on the, based on the level of the spine um, that they occur at. Um, and of course, the spine is is kind of broken up into different sections um, and numbered based on the vertebrae. So we have like C, you know, C1 through C7, and then we start T1 through T12, and then we go down to the lumbar, lumbar and the and the sacrum. So if we have uh, C7 right here, then we go T1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7. And so injuries that occur above that level. Um, can, are uh, folks who have injuries above that level are at risk for autonomic dysreflexia. So what triggers uh, autonomic dysreflexia? Um, it can be anything below that level of injury, um, any kind of stimulation that the body considers to be uh, uh, hazardous or noxious or uncomfortable. Um, anything basically that the body could consider to be bad below that level of stimulation. It could be something as simple as um, a wrinkle in a sock that is um, maybe rubbing and causing a, a blister to form, or um, a, a wrinkle in pants, um, issues with 
the wheelchair cushion. Um, it could even be an excessively hot day sometimes even. So lots of different ways that uh, this issue, auto known with dysreflexia, can be triggered. And it's really, really important for caregivers to know about um, because it can be a life-threatening event. When someone is experiencing autonomic dysreflexia, it causes their blood pressure to get dangerously high um, amongst some other uh, things that, that can happen. They might start sweating excessively. Their heart rate, heart rate might spike. Um, they might be breathing heavier. Um, uh, uh, and so all of these things combined, but certainly the fact that the blood pressure gets very, very high, this is a dangerous situation. It needs to be addressed immediately. Um, and again, this is one of those things I'll, I'll kind of reiterate it. We think about this kind of knowledge as being too technical for non-medical caregivers. And it, it is technical, um, although the fact is, you know, a non-medical caregiver, family caregiver doesn't need to be able to identify T7 on the spine. They don't need to be able to identify, you know, why this thing is necessarily happening. But they do need to be aware that it can happen and what some possible common triggers are because the fact is that caregiver is in a good position to actually help prevent these things from happening. And again, if it does happen, if they're aware that this is something that can happen, that needs to be treated, um, then that allows that caregiver to reach out to the appropriate person to take care of, of that client, of that family member, whoever it is. Um, uh, so super important, super important information for any caregiver to know if they are caring for someone with a spinal cord injury, uh, especially if that injury is above the level of T7. Um, moving on, we will go to tip number two today, which is course is, as always, is for caregiving organizations. Um, so last week we talked about setting goals and being really specific and having measurable goals in our tip. And so I thought kind of a nice way to follow that up, especially at the end of the year when we are all, uh, at the end of the year is sort of a natural time when we all reflect on the year behind us on how things went. It's a great time to be reflective for your business and certainly for your caregiving organization. Um, so that's really the tip for caregiving organizations today is set some time aside. As busy as this season is, as, as crazy as things can get, it's so important to set some time aside to reflect. Is your organization serving the mission that you want it to serve? Is it, is it accomplishing what you really want it to accomplish. Um, are, are you and uh, the people in the organization, are you really embodying the values that you want this organization to embody? And sometimes the answers to those questions are not always what we think they're gonna be or what they want they're gonna be, and that's okay. Um, but we have to take time to reflect in order to realize that and to get ourselves back Certainly, if it is a caregiving organization, it is so important to really reflect on these values, on your mission, on what you're trying to do, and think about how the most important people into your organization play into that mission and, and how they serve that mission. And of course, those people are your caregivers because without your caregivers, there is no caregiving organization. So that's my tip for caregiving organizations today. Take, set aside some time to reflect on whether, on how things are going with your organization, really getting down into whether or not you're serving that mission and, and really thinking about your caregivers and, um, and how, how they are such an important part of serving that mission and how you can support them to help them serve that mission. Um, if you have any questions or concerns, comments, anything at all, of course, you can always uh, simply reply to the post. You can DM me here on LinkedIn. Um, you can uh, simply reach out, um, at, shoot me an email. If you don't have my email, reach out. I'd be happy to share it with you um, so we can have a conversation. Um, I'm here to serve caregivers. 
So Morpheus. He's so sweepy. He played very hard this morning. Um, until next week, I'll be back next week, uh, hopefully live. Um, hopefully my live streaming works next week. Here on LinkedIn for your next 10 minute to tip Tuesday. Until then, y'all, um, I wish you a healthy, happy week.